this is Chris Zitko. I'm one of the e-comfort experts here, and I'm going to show you how to size a garage. Now, just as a reminder, any of our sizing calculators are a room-by-room -room calculator, and uh, you can pretty much use them for just about anything. Now, we do have a garage option on here. I just grabbed the mini split calculator. Once again, you can use any of the calculators that we have. I'm going to start sizing a garage. I've already got some dimensions off of my uh, friend here. Um, so he's looking at 750 square foot garage, which is about 25 by 30. Um, he's going to have a zip code of 46356. The reason why we need this is so that we can pull the uh, temperature off the closest weather stations. Now, his building was built before 1975. Um, all of the building ages, um, room types, and all that other fun stuff are going to have a factor in uh, your sizing calculations because there's going to be some, uh, some assumptions made in the calculations, uh, such as if you were to have like a kitchen, you might have more BTUs uh, versus another room just because of the stove giving off heat. So um, before 1975, we're assuming that you have almost no insulation, if any. Now you can upgrade that as we go through the calculator and I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna select garage because we're doing a sizing for garage. Now you have a good starting point right here. Um, it's giving me 48,100 BTUs for my heat load as of right now. As I go through the calculator, it's gonna start narrowing that down. I can also so, uh, select my desired indoor heating temperature. So if uh, say he wanted it at 50 degrees instead of 70 degrees in his garage, just to keep it warm during the winter, um, you can enter in 50 degrees and it'll give you a different heat calculation. What I'm gonna do though is he does want it at 70, so I'm gonna continue down the line here. I know that all my walls are exposed because this is gonna be a freestanding garage. If you have a garage where one wall is connected to the home or maybe even two walls are connected to the home, you wanna make sure that you list that as not exposed. Now, I do know that the north wall was a 30 foot wall and the east wall was 25. Obviously the rest are gonna follow accordingly. So I know that he has no windows on the north wall. He has one window on the east wall, one window, or I'm sorry, one uh, entry door on the east wall. Uh, south wall, he has one window, no other windows or doors. As far as garage doors are concerned, he has one double door. So uh, I would normally put that as a listing of two garage doors. Next, I know that he has 10 foot ceilings. Now his um, his ceiling is exposed technically because it's ceiling under attic. So we're going to continue here. I'm going to leave it as exposed. And floor is normally slab on grade with most garages. So I'm going to continue with that as floor exposed. Now you can change your different wall and window details as far as if you have any of this information. If you don't, you can leave it as it is and you're going to get a different calculation. Notice how our calculations have gone up now since we entered in all that other information. Let's see what else we can do to get narrow everything down. So when you're going through the wall ins insulation quality, I know that he said he had insulation, but he didn't tell me what form. So I'm going to put that as fair insulation. And I know he said he upgraded the windows. So I'm going to put that as two pane. I don't know if it's two pane low E, but um, most of the windows that uh, he has in his home that he upgraded were all two pane. Uh, continuing off of that, if you need to change the wall type, such as if it's brick, um, stone or uh, basement wall, such as there are some garages where it goes below grade. You can't enter that in as well. I know his garage door is uninsulated. He says he's going to change that at some point in time, but I'm going to leave it as uninsulated for now. Now his ceiling is under attic and it has fair insulation. Continuing slab on grade and floor insulation quality. Normally there's not a lot of insulation, if any insulation on a slab. Um, if you don't know, I normally leave it as none. Uh, that way you can get a little bit better estimate. I'm gonna submit and review everything. Now it's telling me I need about 31,900 BTUs. Um, you can print or download this PDF if you'd like. It's gonna give you all the information here as to what you need. Your average outdoor temperature for his area is two degrees. And it's gonna give you a whole bunch of other information that you had already entered in, as well as your standard heating load and calculations. So based off of this, if I were going to do a Modine or a Resner unit, I'd be looking somewhere between maybe a 45,000 BTU or a 50,000 BTU unit. Uh, next video that I'm going to do, I'm actually going to run through how you take these BTUs because this is an output, not an input. And we're going to go through and we're going to select a couple of different units that we can run off of this. 
If you do have any questions, always feel free to give us a call. If you need us to help you with the sizing, we're here for you on that too. Once again, you could use any of the calculators that we have online. Just as a reminder, it's a room-by-room -room calculator, not a whole house calculator. Thank you and have a great day.